Let's take a closer look at the menu bar. First, notice that some of the menu titles, Windows and View, are dimmed. Both of these menus work on Windows, and we don't have any windows open on this screen, so these menus simply don't apply. We can still pull them down to see what's there, but all the items in the menus are dimmed also. Let's take a look at the disk menu. This menu also has a dimmed item. Our currently selected disk is a hard drive. You can't eject the hard drive, so the finder dims the eject option. Since we now have a window open, we can use the view menu. Notice that the buy icon item has a check mark next to it because the finder is displaying the files in the window as icons. If you choose by name, you'll get an alphabetical listing. The check mark in the view menu has moved to the by name item. This check mark then tells you the current setting of the view menu. Through the magic of video, we are now in the Teach application, a mini word processor included with System 6. The font menu in this program also has a check mark to tell you what font you're using. The size menu has a check mark to tell you what type size you're using. The style menu can have multiple check marks. For example, if your text is bold-faced or underlined, those styles will have check marks next to them. Let's go back to the finder. The erase option on the disk menu has three periods after it. That tells you that the finder will need more information before it can carry out your instructions. In this case, a dialog appears to let us fill in the new name of a disk and choose its format. We'll cover dialogs in a moment. The color menu is a good example of a custom menu. Instead of having a list of color names, you get a swatch of each color. This menu works just like the other menus, except you can also move the mouse sideways. Some of the menu items have key equivalents. For example, you can choose the Select All option by holding down the Apple key and pressing A. Most programs have certain standardized menus, making it even easier to learn new applications. All desktop programs have the Apple menu, which usually contains a help function or the programs about this program information. Your desk accessories are also displayed in this menu. Desk accessories are small programs like the calculator, which can be used inside any other program. The file menu contains options for creating, opening, closing, and printing documents. The edit menu allows you to make changes to your document, including the cut, copy, paste, and undo options. Often, find and other related functions are located here as well. Most of the other menus are specific to individual programs. For example, in word processors like Teach, you'll have a font, style, and size menus. Now let's take a look at two more important elements of the Apple desktop, the dialog window and its cousin, the alert window. This is an alert window, or just an alert. A desktop program uses an alert window to tell you something you need to know and give you a chance to respond. Here's the message. The item teach already exists. Replace this item. These buttons are your means of responding to the computer's message. Click the Cancel button to stop the copy operation, or click Replace to go ahead and replace the existing file with the one you're moving. Often, you'll see an icon in the upper left-hand corner of the alert. This is a caution icon. It tells us that we might have accidentally done something that could cause us to lose some data. In this case, if we choose Replace, the computer will erase the existing file called Teach and replace it with the new one. The old file will be gone. This is a stop icon. It tells us that the computer can't complete the operation we asked it to perform. In this case, we just acknowledge that we've read the message by clicking the Cancel button. This is a note icon. This alert tells us that we can now turn off the computer because we have selected the shutdown option. We don't have to take any action, and there's not really anything wrong. The computer is just using the note alert to keep us informed. Here are some common buttons you'll see in alerts. An OK button acknowledges an alert and tells the computer to continue. It tells the computer, I've read your message. 
A continue button has many of the same connotations as OK, but is usually used in situations where you can choose to continue or cancel an operation. A cancel button tells the computer to stop what it's doing and give you control of the machine. If there's an operation in progress when you click cancel, the computer undoes the operation, as if you've never started it. A stop button also stops the operation in progress, but doesn't undo the operation in progress. With some long, complicated operations, there's no way for the computer to back out gracefully. When you click a stop button, an operation may be left partially completed. By the way, you can also use the keyboard to respond to alerts. Pressing return is the same as clicking the button with the double outline. And pressing escape is usually the same as clicking the cancel button, if there is one. If there are other buttons, you can respond to them just by typing the first letter of their name. This is a dialog window, or just a dialog. This one happens to be the one the finder gives you when you tell it to initialize a disk. Dialogs appear whenever the computer needs additional information before it can carry out your request. Any menu item that ends with three periods will lead to a dialog. You'll recognize the yellow caution icon here, which reminds you that you should be careful because you might lose data if you initialize the wrong disk. There's also a warning message. And these buttons here at the bottom of the dialog tell the computer whether to go ahead and initialize the disk or to cancel the operation without initializing the disk. This here is called a line edit field because it lets you enter and edit a line of text. In this case, you fill in the name you want to give to your new disk. These are called list fields because they contain lists of items you can choose. In this case, you choose the format you want to give your disk from the left list and the size and interleave from the right list. If there were more items in this list, you'd be able to scroll the list using the arrows. You can fill in the fields in a dialog in any order you like. Once you've filled in the necessary information, click the appropriate button at the bottom of the dialog to begin the operation. This is the Finder's Preferences dialog. Most programs have a preferences dialog, which allows you to customize the program to your needs. These are checkboxes. Each time you click a checkbox, it toggles between on and off. If it's on, clicking turns it off. If it's off, clicking turns it back on. You don't have to click the checkbox itself. Hitting the text beside the checkbox is usually enough. This is the Finder's shutdown dialog. It contains some radio buttons. They're called radio buttons because they look and act sort of like the buttons on a car radio for selecting stations. As you can see, clicking one of the buttons turns off any others that might be on. This is the Finder's help window. It's not exactly a dialog, but it does contain one other important item you'll often find in dialogs, a pop-up menu. A pop-up menu is a lot like a pull-down menu. Just click it and hold down the mouse button. Then select an option from the menu. When the menu isn't popped up, its current setting is displayed. This downward pointing arrow is a clue that this control is a pop-up menu. Not all pop-up menus have an arrow, though. Speaking of windows, let's take a closer look at them now. When you open a disk or folder in the Finder, its contents appear in a window. Other programs also use windows to show you the contents of a document, for example, a letter or a report. We've already encountered some simple windows, alerts and dialogues. These kinds of windows are called modal windows because you can't do anything else until you've dealt with them.